He's also the chaplain of our school. And um, he does his English ministry right here, actually, on Sundays. So if any, any of you guys want to drop by on Sundays, uh, feel free to do so. So uh, please welcome Pastor David with a big hand. In the school. So I'm really happy to meet you all, and it's a really a big honor to be the chaplain for the school. You know what the chaplain means? Anybody know what a chaplain is? That's kind of like the pastor for the school. Okay? So what I'm going to try and do is help you guys to do what? Who were the three that were just singing up here? Who are the ones? Raise your hands. You guys were the ones up here singing? And what were you singing about? You're singing about tell the world about Jesus, right? So what I'm going to try and do when I come up here and talk to you and do different things is to teach you and help you to tell other people about Jesus. That's a pretty good thing, right? Because I like to tell people about Jesus. That's why I come and I preach on Sundays and I talk to lots of other folks about Jesus. So I want you to know Jesus and I want you to know him well enough that you go and tell other people about him. So that's what we're going to talk about today. Who remembers or everybody, I think almost everybody went to church last Sunday. What was the Sunday, last Sunday's special message? It was about Easter, right? Everybody remember Easter? Was that Easter? We're talking about Jesus' resurrection? It all sound familiar? Paul Chow in Korean? Okay. Do you remember Paul Chow? Okay. All right. So what we're doing is we're going to talk about a story that is right after Jesus' resurrection. Okay, so you remember the story in Jesus' life. He came here and he lived. He was a little guy like you guys. He grew up. He did ministry. And then for a lot of reasons, he was killed, he was crucified, and he's dead, and he was buried. And we know we celebrated on Easter that he raised again from the dead. Now, I don't know about you, but I've never met anybody personally who was raised from the dead. Anybody met anybody? Jesus was not only raised from the dead then, and there were other people in the Bible who were raised from the dead, but he is still alive. So he is the only one, the only human who was ever killed or died, raised from the dead, and he still lives. That's the story that we're telling everyone. But today we're going to talk about one of the disciples who didn't believe it. And we're talking about Doubting Thomas. He was one of the disciples. So the story that we're going to start with today, and it's up here, is on the evening of the first day of the week, when the disciples were together, Jesus came and stood among them. Now wait a minute. The first day, evening of the first day of the week. Now this is the day that they found out that Jesus was not in the tomb. And they were like, well, what happened to the body? Where did Jesus go? Remember, the angels were there and they said, don't worry, he's risen. Why are you looking for him here? But they're like, well, where did Jesus go? I mean, they hadn't seen anybody raised from the dead either. So they're all gathered together. They're worried all the people that killed Jesus might come and look for them. So they're all together, all except for Thomas, and Jesus came and stood among them. Now, how strange is that? It's like we're here at Village Christian Academy here in Ilsan. We're here, we're having chapel service, and all of a sudden Jesus is standing among us. That would be pretty strange, right? Somebody just suddenly shows up. That's what happened. That's what happened. So what do you think is going through the disciples' mind? Not only did they see Jesus was killed, but suddenly he just shows up in the middle of the room. The doors are locked, and there he is. Now, you'd probably be surprised, right? And when you surprise somebody, like you go home and, and your mom's in the kitchen, or she's doing something, and you suddenly show up, and she's really surprised, what does she usually say? I go come tag ya, right? She's surprised, right? So what do you think the disciples said when Jesus showed up? Well, I don't know what come tag is in, in Hebrew, but that's what they said in Aramaic. But Jesus just, he didn't say, hey guys, don't worry. He didn't say, here I am. He didn't go, ja -ja! he just says, peace be with you. Peace be with you. He acted like it was no big deal. Because to Jesus, it wasn't that big a deal because that was the plan. He knew that's what was supposed to happen. But the disciples were surprised. So he said, peace be with you. So they thought it was a ghost. They thought it was just some sort of, uh, uh, you know, an idea or something was going on. They didn't have 3D back then. You guys have seen the 3D movies. They didn't have that then. So they're like, what is going on? So Jesus says, 
Peace be with you. Then he, showered, he showed them his wounds in his hands and his side. And the disciples were overjoyed when they saw that Jesus had risen from the grave. They knew that this was Jesus. This was not a ghost. This was the real Jesus. So next, so everybody was overjoyed, except there was somebody missing. One of the disciples was not there. His name was Thomas. He was not with the disciples. When Jesus came, so the other disciples told him, we have seen the Lord. So Jesus had already gone. Thomas shows up, and all the disciples are really excited. They go, man, Jesus was here. This was great. And Thomas is like, what are you talking about? What are you talking about? I said, Jesus was here. He said, I don't believe it. Thomas said, unless I seal the, see the nail marks in his hands, put my finger where the nails were, and put my hands into his side, I'm not going to believe it. I don't believe it. Have you ever had anybody, a good friend or your family, you're telling them a story, you know it happened, you know it's true, and they just don't believe you? Well, that's where we are here. I mean, Thomas was good friends with these guys. They were all friends together. They all knew each other. They'd been in ministry for a few years with Jesus. Why wouldn't they trust him? This was just such a fantastic idea. It was just so amazing, so unbelievable that Thomas says, I'm not going to believe this. This is not right. I know you were all here. I know you were all saying you saw Jesus. But he said, unless he comes right here and I can investigate, I can see the nail holes, then I'll believe it. So what are the disciples there thinking? Well, how are we going to get Jesus to come back again? We want Thomas to believe it. Have you ever been with some friends or some family or someone and you try and talk about Jesus? You know Jesus. Everybody here knows Jesus, right? I heard you sing about it. I, thought, I want to be a Christian. You talked about it at the front, right? So you know who Jesus is. But if you talk to people who don't even know Jesus, and you're like, well, I know who Jesus is. He's in the Bible and we have the stories. I know who Jesus is, but they just don't believe you. It's kind of frustrating, isn't it? But that's why we have the story because Jesus is telling us, well, what should you do? You know absolutely you believe Jesus, but the people don't want to listen to you. Just like Thomas, people don't want to listen to you. They want proof. So what proof do we have? Today, what proof do we have? These days we have the Bible, the Word of God. But in this case, fortunately, a week later, the disciples were in the house again and Thomas was with them. Then though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them. And again he says, peace be with you. So the disciples were probably a little surprised, but they were probably happier. Because for a whole week they were saying, well, how are we going to get Jesus back here? Thomas doesn't believe him. Nobody believes us. Suddenly Jesus comes back again. And what does Thomas say? Thomas says, come check ya. He says he's really surprised. Jesus shows up again. The doors were locked, so it was a surprise that he came in. So Jesus reached out to Thomas. Thomas didn't believe. Thomas was not going to go find Jesus. He wasn't even looking for him. But that's why we have the story to tell us what we're supposed to do. When we have people who don't believe Jesus, they don't believe Jesus is alive, they don't believe the stories, they don't believe the Word of God, we're not supposed to just leave them alone. Jesus didn't leave Thomas alone. Jesus came back again. He specially showed up just for Thomas. And he reached out to Thomas specifically, just like he does today to all of us. And then he goes to the next slide. He says that he said, Thomas, put your finger here. See my hands. Reach out your hand and put it into my side. He said, stop doubting and believe. That's all it is. That's how simple the message is. The message of the Bible has not changed. For 2,000 years, we've had the story about Jesus. It's the same story. It's the same story the disciples knew. It's the same story that you have today. It has not changed. People either believe or they don't believe. You all believe. So what does Jesus say? He says, if you believe, go out and tell the people that don't believe. Tell them about me. So you don't have to make up the story. The story's here. You learn the story 
and you take the story out and tell other people so that they can also believe. So like Thomas, go to the next slide. just like Thomas, when he saw Jesus was there, he saw the evidence in front of him, he said, my Lord and my God. At that point, he knew that Jesus was the Messiah. Jesus was who he said he was, and he said, my Lord and my God. He re suddenly respected Jesus for who he was. Not that he just showed up, but that he was God Almighty on the earth. How wonderful is that? And Jesus told him, because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen, but have yet believed. Well, those are you. Jesus says, the second part, blessed are those who have not seen. That's you. You haven't seen Jesus, but yet you have believed. So you are in that wonderful group that Jesus even puts above Thomas. Thomas didn't believe until he saw Jesus. But you believed and you've never seen him. You have the faith to believe in Jesus. How wonderful. So just like the story of Thomas, we're supposed to reach out to other people, help them to believe. So Jesus did many other miracles during the time he stayed with the disciples in the presence of the disciples so that you may believe that he is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. So you need to stop doubting and you need to believe. That's the message you want to take to everyone else. So we not only have a Bible that tells us that Jesus was supposed to come, in the Bible it tells us Jesus came and what happened in his life. It tells us that he was crucified, resurrected, he came back again, and he did many miracles. He did all of that so that we would believe. It's here in your Bible. Read your Bible and you'll know more about Jesus. So that we don't need to see him with our eyes. Physically standing here, we will see him through his word. And then we can trust him. That's how we want to help other people to believe. Because we have other people that are like Doubting Thomas. Because remember, Christ is alive whether they believe it or not. Just because they don't believe it doesn't mean it's not true. It's true. Jesus is alive. So they just need to stop doubting and believe. So when we go to the end of the story about Doubting Thomas, that we want to believe in Jesus. Can you all say hallelujah? hallelujah. Oh no, you gotta do better than that. I got a surprise for you, so you gotta you got do better than that. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Ah, uh, wait a minute, one more time. We're talking about Jesus now. We're talking about the Jesus that we believe and we're going to help other people believe. Jesus is alive. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. All right. What's well, wonderful. So we all know about Doubting Thomas. And it's an issue of helping people believe. Okay. So we remember the story. So I got a little something special here for you. All right. So what we're going to do here. Let me see. Where's our old student here? The senior student. Where is he at? Come on up here. I got something for you. So... What we need you to do is pretty good here, right? Just, you know what this is? Yes. Okay, so what I need you to do is to take this around and for this side of the room here, these students, they all get to pick one. Mm -hmm. yeah, real quick, they just get to pick one. And then they get to talk about it. Tell what did you pick? What is that? What is that? Chocolate. Chocolate, right? You got chocolate. So you guys all get chocolate, right? Pretty nice. It's pretty wonderful, right? You guys can say hallelujah. You got chocolate, right? How nice. Not even just chocolate. This is American chocolate. And we know American chocolate is really special. So you guys have chocolate. So we've given some chocolate, something really special. We've given it to these students. Uh, uh. <laughs> so... Did you guys show up? Hold your chocolate up. No, you don't get one. You have to wait. You guys all, so you guys got chocolate. How you guys feel? You guys don't have chocolate, right? It's wonderful. These guys, hallelujah, they have chocolate. But you guys don't know. You don't have a chocolate. So we do this to show Jesus came and he gave something special to us. And what are we supposed to do with it? What are you supposed to do with the message of Jesus? Give it away. I want you to stand up and give your chocolate to somebody on this side of the room. Stand up. Give them the chocolate. You have your hallelujah. And it's even better because you now get to bless somebody else. You're gonna, you should get one too. should match out. So, you all had something special. 
Don't you feel good? You're able to make them happy? They got something good, right? Yeah, let's call one. So you had your hallelujah, you gave your chocolate to them and you feel better, right? Don't you feel good? So what does Jesus tell us? He said, you give away the message of Christ that he'll bless you even more. So I want you to go ahead and give them now. They get two pieces of chocolate. Okay. The word of God is special. It's special when you have it. It's special when you give it away. The blessings that we get from Christ, he tells us, share with other people. When you share with other people, you will get a double blessing in return. Amen. Okay? So today you learned a lot about sharing Jesus. Sharing the Word of God and helping people not to doubt like Thomas. So that's our word for today. Thank you everybody for listening. And I hope you enjoy the chocolate. We have more sweet stuff in back. Hi. Praise God. You should say amen. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Uh, you couldn't do better than that. Praise God. Amen. If you love Jesus, say amen. 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 I love Jesus too. Um, it is blessing and privilege to be here. And uh, as a chairman of um, board director, I want to encourage you. You are in good place and right place. Uh, while you are studying as a student, uh, do your best and uh, you will face a good future and because of you, many will be blessed. So study hard and pray hard, stay in Jesus. Because of you, your family and even your relationships and your, your uh, friends and your neighbors and this nation and all nation will be blessed when you start the heart. Because of that, let their family be blessed because of them. And because of them, this nation will be blessed. And whole nation will be blessed in the name of Jesus. Father, bless the teachers as well. Provide their need in the name of Jesus. Because of this school, your name be glorified, Father God. I praise your name. Thank you, Father. In your son Jesus' name, I bless and pray. Amen. Amen.